Welcome to an Osset History podcast that will help you to gain an insight into the history behind the question that you need to answer for your smallest and last piece of controlled assessment. If you have any questions about anything that you hear, then please make sure that you ask. The question, of course, is explain the ways in which the role of women in society changed in the years 1951 to 79. Well, it's fair to say that a lot of things happened to women from 1951 to 79, just as a lot of things happened generally in 18 years. I mean, you've not even been alive for 18 years and think of how many things have happened to you. The key to this question is showing that you're aware of what specifically changed for women and how it had an impact on their role in society. I think the people who are better at this um, will focus in on those two aspects for the question. It's not just changes for women, but also their role in society, because maybe things change for women that don't necessarily link back to the role in society and everything that you do has to relate back to this idea of a role in society. To help you to answer the question, you can rely on my explanation in this podcast and pages 15 to 25 of the textbook, which is all about women and what happened concerning them from 1951 to 79. Of course, you can also ask me and I will explain to the whole class um, as well. But this is to sort of tide you over if you're some people are still finishing off last controlled assessment and people are waiting for the next one to start. Well, you've got everything I would probably explain to the whole class, but in your own ears so you can work at your own pace. The summary on page 15 of the textbook, by the way, is a great place to start so you can get an overview of how far things changed in the terms of the roles of women. So turn to page 15 now. There are five things listed on the page. Work, the home, money education and politics and you could choose to write about some of these things in your historical explanation but there are other things to consider too and so to the story of women in britain from 1951 to 79 sit back and strap yourself in for a story <music> women had made great strides in the 20th century particularly during the First and Second World War, when women had proved that they could work just as effectively as men when the nation was in great need. However, as the flames of war subsided, nearly two million women left their jobs to return to their traditional roles as housewives and mothers. Though women might have gained some respect, they were still seen as second-class citizens in many respects. For example... If a woman wanted to buy something on higher purchase, which means buying it now and paying for it in instalments over a period of time, so essentially buying it on credit, then they had to have the signature of a man to guarantee the deal, almost as though the women can't be trusted. This probably seems ridiculous to you now, especially if you're a young woman. But this was not so long ago, and it was very ingrained in British society. It was, shockingly to us now, women as well as men who held these views perhaps largely because they'd grown up and lived in a society where these views about the dominance of men were taken as fact rather than opinion by so many. The first thing we're going to consider is the home. Many women wanted to have a career, but many still, just as now, wanted to be housewives. The role of women in the home changed during the period we're looking at, and most of this was for the better. For example, through the 1960s there was a great drive to connect all homes in Britain to running water, electricity and gas. And this had largely been achieved uh, by 1969. This, coupled with the economic upturn and the availability of higher purchase, meant that appliances like fridges, freezers, vacuum cleaners or cookers were no longer seen as luxury items and most people had them with the result that life for housewives became a little bit easier. Shopping also became easier. We've mentioned higher purchase, but also the 1960s brought the age of the supermarket, so women only had to visit one place to do all their shopping. You or your family might do a lot of shopping on, say, for example, Amazon or eBay or something like that. Well, before the internet age, the shopping catalogue was popular. Kind of... The equivalent of those sorts of like Amazon, for example. Amazon's kind of like a shopping catalogue online and you, you, you order things online and it comes. Well, with a shopping catalogue, you either ordered them through the post or over the phone. And this meant that housewives could even do shopping from the comfort of their own homes for the first time. However, 
All of this great news should be considered alongside the fact that advertisements and catalogues reinforce the traditional role of women. So when you think about our question about how far our women's roles in society changed, you might think that for many women their role didn't change that much, even if their traditional role got easier. And so to the second thing we're going to look at, which is education and employment, where things were a bit different for women. In the 1950s, careers and professions were male-dominated, and this was in part because of the view of society about the traditional roles of women, but also because of the lack of educational opportunities for women, which meant that men tended to be better qualified, which made it difficult to reverse the problem, because if a man and a woman went up for a job, well, the likelihood was that the man would be better qualified because he'd had access to better qualifications. In the early 1960s, only one quarter of all science, medicine or engineering courses at university were made up of women students, or female students should I say, and a large number of them ended up becoming housewives soon after they graduated anyway. Only 15% of doctors and 5% of lawyers were women in the 1960s. Feminist movements of the 1960s helped to change this, as women campaigned for a more equal status in society. For example, the Women's Liberation Movement set up in groups, or set up groups in towns, cities and universities around the UK. The Women's Liberation Movement took part in protests, including the famous bra burning protests, to try to show that they should not be held back simply because of their gender. There was a huge event at a Ford car factory in Dagenham in 1968, which has gone down in history as a key turning point in the plight of women. You can see a film about it if you look for Made in Dagenham. And there's also a theatre production of of this whole uh, aspect of history. The basic story is that women in the car plant were not being paid as much as men, so they went on strike and successfully closed the factory and newspapers and trade unions supported the women in their strike action. Eventually, the Labour government, which was in power at the time, the, well, their, their employment minister, who, interestingly, was herself a woman, negotiated a deal in which women would be paid 90% of the pay of men. So they didn't quite get everything that they, they wanted there, because they only got 90% of the men's pay. But, two years later, in 1970... The Equal Pay Act was introduced. and Many historians would say that the drama at the Dagenham car plant led to this monumental step. It's, a, it's an amazing story, and that's probably why it's a theatre production and a film as well, because these women, uh, working class, not particularly educated, not very political, they were just fed up with not being paid what they deserved. And so they took matters into their own hands. Even their own husbands sometimes were against what they were doing. Yet, they persevered, and eventually they they won. An amazing story. So, yeah, watch it if you can. So, in terms of payment in employment, women went from being paid on average only two-thirds of the wages of men for the same job uh, in 1951 to being paid equally. In addition, attitudes to women at work were changing in the 1970s, with more people seeing it as socially acceptable for women to have a career, and not necessarily to just stay at home as housewives bringing up children. Although there's always another side of the coin, because women were still often overlooked for promotion in favour of men. This would be called a glass ceiling in employment for women. It was like they could get so far, they could see the top, but they couldn't quite get to the top because there was a glass ceiling there stopping them. It's a fairly common phrase it used in business if, if people are being prevented from getting uh, higher up. At university, things had also changed because now around half of all graduates were women, as opposed to just a quarter in the early 1950s. And so if we reverse to what we already said, now if a company advertised um, a specialist job and they had a man and a woman going for the job, well, it, it was more likely that the woman would be as qualified as the, as the man because they had more opportunities to go to university. So if we think of the question about the roles of women, in this sense, the roles of a significant number of women changed because they were more likely to be educated, employed, and paid a fair wage.
This all sounds very good, but if you're going to be a great historian, which I know many of you are, you should also think about the elements of the roles of women that didn't change much. For example, in 1970, Britain saw its first page three girl in the Sun newspaper. So women not being viewed as objects, given greater respect, more chance in the workplace, better educational opportunities. They were happening through the 50s through the 60s, but things hadn't changed that dramatically if in 1970 women were being made into objects on page three of what became the most popular newspaper in the country. Children's toys as well and books often reinforce gender, gender stereotypes like the famous five or, well, one that you probably know, Barbie dolls. With most boys' toys being guns or car garages or action men. So action men were definitely aimed at boys and Barbie dolls with their Barbie doll house and all of this stuff. It was aimed at, at girls, which helped to reinforce this idea from an early age that there's boys' toys and boys' things to do and there's girls' toys and girls' things to do and this is how you should be if you're going to fit into our society. Thank you very much. In addition, if you looked at schools in the 1970s, girls were often forced to study things like home economics, which involves cooking or textiles, whilst the boys at the same time will be studying woodwork or metalwork, again reinforcing those gender stereotypes of this is what men should do, this is what women should do. So there you have it, the story of the changing role of women from 1951 to 1979. Now you need to use the textbook as well as this podcast to find different things that you could write about in your final piece of controlled assessment. You don't have much space to write many notes. Remember when you do answer your question, perhaps it would be a good idea to listen, give this podcast to listen to before you actually come into the, the lesson on that day. Um, but when you're actually sat there, remember, these are the things that you've got to consider in your marks from the mark scheme, that you must make your answer directed explicitly at the question focus which means answer the question you've actually been set instead of going off topic with that in mind you should try to refer to key words in the question in addition everything you write should be relevant to the question focus in terms of the historical facts you use do remember that you will only have half an hour to write your answer to this question so you can't write much it's not like that inquiry question where you had a whole hour you probably have enough time to write a small introduction, a couple of paragraphs and a, and a conclusion, but it's up to you to decide how you structure your own work. Um, the mark schemes are all on the website for you to have a look at if you want to see what you've got to do next. You need to go on the mark scheme page and scroll to the bottom. And if I were you now, um, I'd start reading the textbook if you haven't done already and finding things and learning a little bit more and also do make sure if there's any questions you've got about this podcast that you ask me because that's what I'm here for. Good luck. Good luck.